Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm going to be doing a celebrity psychic reading uh, on a historical figure. Some of you may know him, some of you may have studied him through your world history classes or throughout school. Uh, this is Vlad Dracula. <laughs> Vlad Dracula um, psychic reading. So um, a lot of you will know that, well, for those of you that don't know who Vlad was that is the real name of the individual that was alive during the 14th century the 1400s um that people you know associated him with vampirism and being considered the vampire the ultimate vampire dracula and from that uh from his life there was a lot of legends that have been translated into movies into books uh and he sort of is like the pop icon culture or the the pop culture you know icon or legend historical legend of his time that has transcended space and time over the years and has led to him being synonymously known as you know dracula so um i'm gonna go ahead and give you the tea i'm going to give you everything from spirit that i'm getting um, when i channel in what who was vlad dracula i'm not going to give you the history lesson i'm not going to delve into you know the, the things that he did but just to give you a little bit of backstory he was a ruler of romania um in the 14th century and the, you know there was a lot of things going on with the ottoman empire and a lot of wars a lot of um heinous crimes committed by other people who wanted to take him out and wanted to rule over Romania. Um, so there was just a lot of different things that, that transpired. But um, when we get into the soul of Vlad, I'm going to call him Vlad, um, and who he was as a person, um, that's what I'm going to be providing you today with that insight of who he really was. So when I tune into his soul, I feel like this man was someone that... Um, you have to understand the times that they were in back then there was no structure there wasn't any um you know policies or rules or police everybody back then basically you were fending for yourself and there was no you know if you committed a crime most most of the time if you killed someone or you did something back then it would be un unpunishable because back then they didn't have people unless there was a witness you know and then it was brought before you know the king or the ruler or whoever then you were held accountable but back then there was just a lot of things going on and really and truly vlad was like responsible for romania he rose to power very quickly but he worked very hard for it too and and there was things that he had to do to prove to the public that you know to the the people that he was going to be you know the ruler and no, nobody was going to dethrone him but with that there was a lot of sadistic and and very you know unlike when i did the reading with um when i did the reading on on um one elizabeth bathory you know and she was termed as like the female version of dracula with her it was a lot of rumors and lies with vlad i feel like there's a lot of truth and validity and that's what i'm going to get into um, when it comes into the crimes and who he was and and was he bloodthirsty you know that's the that's the thing that we need to to dive into so um, i do feel like he was a very complicated individual there was a lot of things that he witnessed as a child there would have been like deaths uh, disease people dying so um and people being killed and i feel like this was all around the the village you know that he grew up in the area he grew up in he would have witnessed all of this um i feel like his father was someone that wasn't uh, very nice i do feel like there was a uh, beatings there was a um there was abuse that he would have endured mental and physical abuse um and so this kind of shaped his mentality to have this iron fist and this ruling you know of, of power this thirst for power because he he never wanted to feel like that again feel imp you know disempowered or feeling like someone could just come and sweep you know pull the rug from underneath him he wanted to maintain that that power and that that strong um you know persona that character that he he built up so i feel like he had to do many things i, I don't feel like he was a, a person that respected women at all i do feel like he actually had at least four kids from multiple women but i don't think that this was documented in the history books but he does have a bloodline that is still um still you know alive today that would have 
you know, across all the generations and whatnot. Uh, I do get that he didn't have any kind of, um, he became emotionally void, almost like dead inside. And I think this is why a lot of people kind of term him or, you know, associate him as being Dracula, you know, this bloodthirsty fiend. Um, because again, when he was alive, I feel like he got to a point where he saw, you know, a lot of his, his loved ones pass and be, you know, uh, killed off a lot of people that he cared about. And he saw a lot of things that kind of shaped and molded him psychologically. I don't feel like he was, he was all there. Honestly, I feel like there was a lot of, uh, darker thoughts, a lot of, uh, bloodthirst. He was bloodthirsty for revenge. Um, and it became something where he wanted people to fear him. And you have to understand, like I said, when I did the Elizabeth uh, Bathory video, um, when you back then, when you rose to this kind of power, anyone, you know, could basically, you know, if there was enough in numbers, they could have dethroned him or kind of killed him off. So he wanted to create that fear. So they always had it in their mind, almost like, you know, uh, registered that they, you know, needed to fear him and that he was somebody that was very powerful. Um, but I do get that he did have a heart, you know, when it came down to perhaps his own, his own flesh and blood, he did have a little bit of compassion, but as he got older and he got into, you know, into all of this war and bloodshed, he really didn't care. And there was a lot of things, you know, torturing that, I won't go into everything because it's kind of morbid and, and I don't like to cover that, but there was torturing, people being stretched. I see a lot of different images flashing in, uh, people being hung, people being uh, impaled on stakes. That was not a lie. Uh, decapitations, uh, fingers cut off, hands cut off, limbs cut off. Um, you you could think of this being like a a, a horror place, you know, like a a torture chamber that's kind of like how they would would carry out these things um when they wanted to interrogate someone and even if they told the truth they would still kill them and i see stacks of bodies bodies upon bodies uh and then eventually being burned um so it, it was a very heinous very uh he was he was someone that was not a, a good person um he wasn't always that way. And I feel like in many ways, he was a dark soul living on earth at that time. And um, he had a lot of karmic baggage from other uh, past lives that he would have had. So I do feel like he was definitely someone that was a very much a dark soul. And this is what kind of um, made him carry out a lot of these crimes, almost like Hitler, you know, when you compare um, a lot of these, these, uh, antagonistic type of people this is kind of like the role you know that they they carry and in this lifetime it like hitler like um stalin and then like vlad and you know there's a lot of other historical people that you know that carried out a lot of these tortures and stuff but i feel like he actually took pleasure in seeing people and he didn't really have you know i see him standing there seeing people being tortured and he would just have a like a grim you know smile on his face a very you know sinister and and he took pleasure in that and i feel like darkness surrounded him so there was always this theme of of loss of death around him and i really feel like deep down in the inner core of his soul even though he was such a dark individual um he did fear death and he knew that sooner or later it would come and it would be painful for him now regardless of how the history books state how he died um what i get is that he was murdered he was definitely murdered and i feel like it was a stab um that he would have received stab in um in the chest area <clears throat> and this is something that you know that he that they had it out for him they wanted to take him out um he was just it was just too much too much too many things that he he did in his time that just were not uh not good they were not you know pleasant just a lot of evil that uh surrounded vlad and from this a lot of people the generations you know that after his passing uh drew a lot of these things because i feel like when he passed and they buried him and whatnot uh, a lot of people started associating him or they started seeing there was rumors that he was walking through the village or they would see him, you know, in villages 
on a horse. So it was like they created this legend of Dracula. And um, I do feel like he was earthbound and he did haunt the area. So a lot in a lot of ways, you know, you, you could associate Dracula being as this ghost that haunted the area and i don't feel like his soul was at rest with all of the things that he did um and and i just get that you know he wouldn't be have he wouldn't have reincarnated because he has so much uh bad karma that he did during his life you know during this time period in the 14th century the 1400s that he would have um faced a lot of things in the spiritual realm um to kind of purify his soul into uh not judgment but so, so to speak to to work through all the darkness that he he has in his soul and that he had um but i still feel like he's not going to reincarnate anytime soon uh i, I definitely feel like he's still there in in the spirit realm and learning it's basically all about learning and rectifying and kind of purifying the things that that he did here on earth so that he has a better understanding and eventually souls like that can you know acclimate and they can change but i do feel like there's just so much pain and i feel like uh i i do get that you know he would have had like he would have tasted blood you know not drank from it but tasted it before um when he was killing people so i do feel like in many ways that's another reason that the legend did you know come up as dracula um as we know him today and um i do feel in many ways too that he was an energy vampire believe it or not he got energy from seeing people dying from death um in many ways this translates to this translates to a vampire you know in many ways but people would think associate this with as a, uh, a blood-sucking vampire someone that drinks blood but in many ways i feel like he was just an energy vampire in many ways and he got a lot of his power and energy from seeing people killed and murdered and tortured and that's how he got a lot of his jollies and a lot of his his energy um and i don't feel like any of the women that he would have been in relationships with uh, liked him they all were fearful of him and they didn't have really a choice but to just be with him because they knew they would all suffer the same fate which would be death if they resisted so it was like they were almost like blackmailed and that's kind of like the energy that i get from a lot of these women that they were very scared they really knew exactly what he was capable of and they knew that he didn't have any limits so he was someone that got what he wanted you know in in his in that lifetime he was someone that was very much that was you know privileged to a certain extent uh but with dark energy and that's what i just i keep getting a lot of darkness around this this person um and I feel like he used his voice to intimidate people and scare them and threaten them. There was a lot of threatening, a lot of blackmail, a lot of sending his, you know, his own uh, crew, you know, his own staff members to threaten other people that, you know, enemies that he would have had. Um, and I also see him riding with like a feathered pin um, and blood too. So there was a lot of things that he, he was into. I also feel like there was a, a certain um how should i say this he had like a, a i don't want to say like a psychic with him but he did have someone that was mystical that would have been like considered like a a practitioner a witch that's kind of how it comes in that would have been you know or an oracle some people would call it an oracle to give him insight into what was coming next i do believe that he believed in that and there was a lot of that still pre prevalent that the history books omit but every ruler typically they had someone that was like a seer someone that was uh, an oracle that gave him a lot of information or gave him insight of, as to what was coming uh, again you know with seers and psychics and mediums there are still limitations onto what we can see only what spirit allows us to see but i do get that he would have had a lot of this uh he would have had a person this would have been a female uh around him that would have been giving him this kind of uh, information and how he paid her off would have been with silver and with other other luxuries you know and had her in his in his castle and i do feel like they had a sexual relationship as well going but i feel like this was very, a very short lived it was like for a short li uh, lived amount of time almost like maybe a span of six years six to eight years that this was going on 
probably even less than that, probably about five years max. But I do feel like he had people that were very well versed in the occult and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, the, this is a, it's, it's kind of eerie. It's spine tingling when I tune into him. Uh, I do get that he, he had a lot of, of demons. He had a lot of baggage, a lot of dark darkness around him. And, uh, yeah, that's the reason that his legend, you know, he's lived, he's, his soul in many ways has been kept alive um, through all of these legends, these movies, every Halloween, you know, they associate him as uh, a vampire. And you could say that, that it, there is truth in that. Like I said, he's an energy vampire. So it makes perfect sense that he would have been deemed or termed Dracula. But that is the psychic reading that I get on v uh, Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Dracula. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you would like to set up a private reading, you can go to my website. That's www.raymondguzman.net forward slash shop. Um, and also be sure to check out my um, new series. It's called Tea with Spirit. Uh, episode five is now uh, published. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. If you have a question, you can submit that with the subject line T with spirit. And then in the uh, body of your email, compose, you know, uh, a specific question and then have an alias. And if your your question is selected during um, one of the shows, I will be reading it on air and, um, you know, reading your your uh, alias name on there uh, as well. So you can send all those to Raymond Guzman at Hotmail.com. Blessings and love and light. Have an amazing day.